The next plugin we're going to install is the Planet Explorer. Um, this allows you to visualize uh, planet data and especially the free, now freely available um, pantropical planet base maps. So the first step that we'll need to do for this, if you're not done this already, um, is to sign up for a level one user access account. And this can be done at the website, the planet website, um, or planet.com slash N-I-C-F-I. Um, this link can also be found in the tutorial. So if you've signed up for a planet account in the past, that is not for this new user agreement with the um, tropical base maps, you'll need to sign up for a new account here or it's not going to work. Um, at least that is the best of my understanding and uh, the way it is as um, at the time of creating this video. So what you need to do is, is sign up for a new account to get level one user access and that allows you to use these base maps. So once you've signed up for an account here, um, then we could um, add the plugin the same way that we add, added the Quick Map Services plugin, um, which is in plugins and then manage and install plugins. And so up here, instead of Quick Map Services, we're going to search for planet underscore explorer. Um, and once again, you could install it by clicking the install plugin button down here. Okay, so once again, it'll think for a minute or so um, as it's downloading and installing everything it needs to. Um, and then you should get a message that was installed correctly, which in which case we can now use the plugin. So we'll close out of that. Um, I'll close out of these other layers and the Quick Map Services plugin. Um, and so now this plugin can be found also at, under web and then Planet Explorer and Planet Explorer. And so the first time that you load this plugin, um, you're gonna need to provide login credentials for the level one user account that you just created. And if you click Save Credentials, then you won't have to do this again in the future. Oh. Okay. Um, so now we're logged in, and you should see uh, that the uh, message that says the login is successful, and then the Planet Explorer application over here. Um, so this plugin gives you the option to search for daily imagery, uh, but that's not part of the level one user agreement. Um, for tropical countries, uh, the level one agreement for, provides access to high resolution base maps, um, which could be found in the top drop down menu under Mosaic series. You should see two results. Um, and this might be updated over time, uh, but right now these are the data sources that we have access to. Um, the first one is called the PS Tropical Normalized Analytic Biannual Archive. And the second one is called PS Tropical Normalized Analytic Monthly Monitoring Archive. Those are a, a mouthful to say, um, but basically the first one are biannual mosaics. Um, and the recent one are mosaics of more recent months for monitoring purposes. Um, so I recommend using, to start at least, one of the biannual archive mosaics. Um, which is in the top collection here. Um, and you could add them to the map by first expanding upon this list here um, and then selecting one we want and just double clicking to add it to the map. So as you'll see, there's uh, these biannual mosaics from 2017 to 2020. Um, I believe that Planet is, is rolling out all of these over time. Um, although these might be it looks like these are all here now. Um, so, but the point of the story is if they add more imagery, it might look 
a little bit different than what it does here. So I'm going to add June 2020 to the map by just double clicking it. And you'll see it's added to the layers panel over here. Um, I'll exit out of the browser so we could see better. These two other layers came from the quick map services. So I'm just going to remove them to make it a little bit cleaner. Okay. So now we'll see over here that we have a new layer that is the June 2020 biannual mosaic. And so you'll also see that there are a couple of uh, visualization parameters for how we want to um, how we want this to look on the map. The first one is has to do with how it was processed uh, or the processing mode. Um, so there are a few multi-band compositing options, and then there are also spectral indices such as NDVI. Um, I'm going to use NDVI here. Um, if you are not aware, it's a uh, widely used uh, spectral index um, to analyze photosynthetically, photosynthetically active green vegetation. That's also a mouthful. Okay, so now this is displaying the mosaic of NDVI values rather than looking at it like a RGB image. And so the next option is to uh, just is for the color ramp. Um, the default here is reds. So you see this isn't, this is a little hard to interpret. It's just a lot of red. Um, there are a lot of options that you could play with. Um, they load pretty quickly. Um, one of the palettes is called NDVI. So it's specifically um, designed for visualizing NDVI. And so this ranges from red in low values of NDVI or low vegetation um, to dark green in highly vegetated areas. Um, so I'm looking at Columbia or the Columbian area now, but if we zoom out this, we could see both. We could see the extent of what these base maps are available in, um, but we could also see the clear patterns in vegetation that are visible through NDVI.